You mentioned that you have a lot of fun with the fans and that sometimes you prance around in your bikini top. But there was one issue that you had. Do you remember what that was? With my boobies. Right. Um, so you mentioned Am that- Am I getting a free pair of boobies today? Is that what you want? A restaurant is a restaurant that only hires female servers with, you guessed it. It's our breasts. Along with the right body type. The guys want to see a hot chick with big boobs behind the bar. And this dumbass, I meant genius, is the guy who coined the term. But he didn't stop there. Continuing his moron coinage rampage, he decided to rename a Texas ghost town after his restaurant. Welcome to bikinis. Bartenders don't have to wear bikinis. You are supposed to be wearing a bikini. I just chose not to since we're on TV. Doug Culler, which is a name I'd land on if I were trying to name a porta potty, is undercover in his own restaurant sniffing out bad employees. Priority number one. You guessed it. It's our breasts. Doug has painstakingly built a culture at Bikinis, a complex system of standards that can be best described under one simple motto. If them titties ain't showing, his business ain't growing. When I see that Jessica's not in a bikini top, I was pissed. You wear a bikini top, jean shorts, and cowboy boots. That's not what we do here at Bikinis. That's not what we do here at Bikinis. So what you do here at Bikinis is employ your all-female staff to expose themselves to the public and on national TV. At this point, in terms of branding, he's giving less CEO and more, how do I say this, pimp. Yeah, that would be the dream, financially speaking. Pimps and employees with ambition are like oil and water. If she continues to be this reasonable, she might not last long under pinhead Larry over here. What with all her self-respect. So how come you're wearing a shirt and not a bikini top? Um, because I chose to wear a t-shirt. You might take it off later? Oh no, I'm not gonna take it off later. The sign on our building doesn't say shirts, it's called bikinis. I mean, come on. Exactly, I mean, come on. Everything's better in twos. Double D's equals double the tips. Now chop chop, take off your top. You might take it off later. The name Bikinis Texas carries a little bit of shock value with it. it uh, what has the feedback been on, on the name of the town? Right. Uh, by and large, for the most part, uh, I think the Fredericksburg neighborhood uh, or Gillespie County is where we are, mm -hmm. uh, has been really receptive um, to us coming in. I think uh, uh, what sat there prior uh, uh, wasn't, um, uh, I, I guess, wasn't that... Uh, uh, a titty bar. Uh, what sat there prior wasn't a titty bar. I think that's what you were going for. Doug, did you want to give that another shot? Um, uh, I, I guess wasn't that, uh, uh... I'm walking, bro. All right. This is gonna sound weird, but I feel like I know this guy. I feel like this guy's always at the bar. He's an archetype. And so is Doug. He's basically every CEO on Undercover Boss embodied, except when he tells you to take off your clothes, it's not behind closed doors. I know, it's the creepiest plot twist ever. Anyways, no good deed goes unpunished, and certainly watching all 11 seasons of this show is ample punishment for the good deed that will be a more comprehensive video on Undercover Boss, exposing it for the cesspool it is. This video is actually an expanded segment from a longer script that I decided to isolate due to the pure buffoonery you're about to witness. Your discretion is advised. No, seriously, I do advise that you subscribe. All right, let's go. Let me introduce you to Doug Guller. Okay, Pinhead Larry, now you get yours. Of all the come up stories I've heard on this show, this bald headed f takes the cake. This is the most vile case of white privilege on Undercover Boston. That's saying a lot. It goes a little like this. Back in 1998, I was working at a telecom firm in DC. I was just burnt out of uh, the corporate world. So I took a six month sabbatical. I had to Google the term sabbatical because I'm not a middle-aged white man from 2004. Since when is six months out of 12 a vacation? At that point, you're literally vacating more than you're working. Today, if any working class person were to take six months off, they'd be coming home to the apocalypse, much less a job. Say you have a bullshit job without saying you got a bullshit job. Uh, sitting on a beach in Australia, having this beautiful waitress serve you cold beer, I thought, well, that's it. That's what I'm gonna do. Wow, that sabbatical was your spiritual awakening, bro. You devised the first non-idea ever. Let me find out where we're all living life on Hall of Fame difficulty. I don't know what to do! 
Wow. Meanwhile, this nigga out here splashing shit in straight rookie mode. I moved to Austin and opened up the first bikinis by pouring in all my savings and maxing all my credit cards. Yeah, after all, the best business moves are the ones that put you in severe debt and servitude to random banks and basically credit card fraud. It was important for me from the very start not to bring on any partners in the business. Right, zero partners to help you. Snort the longest line of c since your sabbatical before you came up with this tumor that you call a business idea. All right, now that is funny. Let's see how Pinhead's supreme logic carries on into managing other people. How are you doing? Good, I'm Just Jake. Kev. Well, let me pour this beer real quick, okay. then go ahead and jump behind the bar. Now, just background, Jessica is currently bartending because her previous employer went bankrupt through no fault of her own. She actually used to be in sales. In sales, I'm a closer. And this is the moment where she closes Pinhead on firing her. I wouldn't do it if it, if it didn't help pay the bills, so that's for sure. This is definitely not gonna be permanent. I'm on the search right now, so as soon as someone bites on my resume, then... The more I talk to Jessica, the more I'm not happy having her on board with the lack of passion that she has in our company. Meanwhile, your entire business model is based on the lack of clothes these girls wear to work. Uh -huh. No, you're 100%. 100%, you're, uh, yeah. She is locked and loaded about not working at bikinis. It's not worth it. I'd rather spend my time and energy focused on someone else who wants to be here. Okay, so let me get this straight. Because she plans on not being a bartender for the rest of her life, you figure it's best to fire her and kick her into the street. You shared to me, especially when we were talking at the end, that it doesn't seem like bikinis is your real passion. You're not right for bikinis. It was clear to me that day. So I'm sorry, Jessica, it's not working out. Today's your last day. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! I'm so mad right now. Just so you know, I know a lot of people in Austin and Dallas, so I can really get your resume out there. So I'll be sure to go to the guy, give you my resume, who just fired me, to help me get a new job. All right, Doug, so we have your quarterly report here. First off, firing employees for no good reason, check. Um, douchebaggery, check. Pinhead, check. And now's the perfect time to slap the like button while I slap the piss out of Doug for all of our sake. Now that is funny. Now that is funny. Now that is funny. I know I said he was living life on rookie mode, but for Christ's sake, he's a Hall of Fame douchebag. Is everyone happy with the job they have at right when they have it? No, but I humble myself to do what I gotta do. That doesn't make me a horrible person just because I'm not satisfied where I'm at. Speaking of horrible people, check out what you get for being an airhead who's been fired how many times? I've been fired like four or five times. Four or five times. Shorty is the epitome of just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. You don't want to work for anyone like no, that. of course not. I know you've been back and forth a I couple have. times. Well, I don't plan on leaving. Good. Good. We don't want you to. I hope you're here to stay. You love your phone. I'm a 23 year old girl. It's my favorite thing to do. Again, this is the one he's choosing not to fire. My job is a piece of cake and I love it. And I love the only expectation of me is being friendly and being yeah. pretty because I can do those things yeah. every day. Yeah. I love prancing around in a bikini and as soon as I saw the outfit, I was down for it. The only thing I changed about the outfit is make my boobies a little bigger and that's about it. I was really happy with what I saw today. I cannot believe they aired this horror show. And I won't accuse Doug of being a colorist, but let's just say he prefers employees with particularly brown noses. Oh. I was shocked when I heard that two girls quit tonight. And like most CEOs, he's extremely out of touch. I mean, workers are quitting right in his face, clearly due to crappy conditions. And instead of implementing systematic change, you know the premise of the show, he gets insurance for one manager, then drops a bag on a pair of tits for his best girl. You don't want to work for anyone like no, that. Of course not. You mentioned Am that. I getting a free pair of boobies today? Is that what you want? Yes. yes. I want a full C. So, I'll make you a deal. Okay. If you can make it through six months, no phones, really focused while you're in here, and we'll make this happen. Oh my god, genius incentive program, Doug. So, Pippi Longstocking, don't be an asshole for six whole months, and you'll get yourself a new pair of tits. Not a bad deal if I say so myself. <laughs> Kill me, please. I want to die. If I have new boobies, this just makes my job so much easier. Like, I don't even have to talk as much. They do all the talking. Do I wish bad on Brody's business? No. But would I love to see it fail? I hope so. No, okay. 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 Ah! You may now take comfort in knowing Bikinis has been defunct as of 2018 and the original town name was restored, subsequently lifting the reddish apocalyptic tint blanketing the town since Doug's arrival. So far this week, I've been disappointed to see that our locations aren't as full as they should be. 
in the past, I've done a lot of stump marketing to try and draw attention to our brand, and I'm starting to see that that might not be enough. However, the whole restaurant business model still occupies a huge sector of the market in the form of Hooters, Twin Peaks, and the like, through which I will happily be door dashing and Uber eating to my heart's content because, let's be honest, this is not a call to action to boycott those places. Uh, this video is simply to rag on Doug and by proxy undercover boss as a show. Today, you can find Pinhead running multiple restaurants in the Austin area, none of which are restaurants. Honestly, if I had to guess, this guy's in bed with multiple gatekeepers in the restaurant business, and he's not gonna stop. After all, he is always one bump away from his next business breakthrough, such as a dating site masquerading as LinkedIn, except with zero profitability. And please, for the love of God in heaven, boomers and millennials, stop trying to make tech companies. You're ruining all of our lives. All right, now that is funny. 